Good morning everyone. We're back once again with another amazing science tutorial video. And in this video, we're going to be talking about energy transformations. So let's begin. So we're looking at the law of conservation of energy when we look at energy transformations. So that means energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transformed from one type or one form to another. So for example, when you light a match, the match itself has chemical energy inside of it, but when you light that match, the chemical energy gets transformed into radiant energy in the form of light, and then into thermal energy in the form of heat. So there are two major types or kinds of energy. The first type is potential energy, and it stores energy in an object due to its position. So for example, books on a desk. If you look at the books on this desk, they're not moving, but they have a position above the ground. The higher they are above the ground, the more potential energy they have. And then if you look at a biker at the top of a hill, a, the, a biker at the top of a hill is going to have much more potential energy at the top of that hill than he is at the bottom. Once again, the higher you are or the higher the object is, the more potential energy it has. And it can also be potential energy based upon its chemical makeup. So for example, a piece of fruit, and we gave the example earlier in match. But let's look at the food that we eat. So the food that we eat has a lot of potential energy in it because it has chemical energy. So when we eat our food, we break those chemical bonds and release the energy in that food so to give us energy so that we can do work. Let's look at our second major type of energy. Our second major type of energy is kinetic energy, and that's energy from motion. The faster an object moves, the higher the kinetic energy. So for example, if we look at these books over here, they're falling off the wall. So they were sitting still with potential energy, but when they start to fall, they, had, they have kinetic energy. So the longer they fall, the more kinetic energy they have. And then if we look at this biker riding down the hill, the biker is riding down the hill and he's going faster and faster and accelerating and accelerating, which gives him more kinetic energy. Then if we look at this baseball pitcher throwing this baseball, the faster or harder he throws the baseball, the more it accelerates and the more kinetic energy it has. And then last but not least, let's check out this waterfall right here. So we have this water falling and moving down. The higher the waterfall, the more kinetic energy it's going to have. One thing you notice in all of these examples, all of these objects are moving. So potential energy, the objects are sitting still like these books. Kinetic energy, the objects are in motion. Our major forms of energy are mechanical energy, radiant energy, heat and thermal energy, chemical, electrical, electromagnetic, nuclear, and sound. So if you notice, I have the pictures over here that represent each form. And then we'll talk about each one of these pictures and each form in detail in the following slides. So let's look at our first one. We're looking at mechanical energy. And mechanical energy is energy of motion or position. Remember, mechanical energy, things are going to be moving. It's not 100% efficient. Much of the mechanical energy is lost to heat. So even when you work out, you sweat when you work out and you lose heat energy through your sweat. And then we have examples here. So sound, wind, waterfall, compressed spring, moving machine parts. All of these have something in common. They are all types of mechanical energy because they are in motion. Then we have radiant energy. And radiant energy is energy that comes from sunlight and it travels through space and heats the earth. So our form of radiant energy is going to be solar energy, also known as sunlight. Now, since it's winter time where we are now, then we're not feeling too much radiant energy now. But when the spring and the summer comes around, then we'll feel a lot of radiant energy. And then if we look at electrical energy, that's going to be moving electrical charges. So electricity from batteries, power lines, lightning, the batteries in your car, all of them have electrical energy. Now let's take a look at electromagnetic energy. And this is energy that travels in waves. And it has electrical and magnetic properties. So for our examples would be light, magnetism, x-rays, radio waves, microwaves, ultraviolet, and infrared radiation. Now, each form of electromagnetic energy carries a certain amount of energy. So, for example, radio waves don't carry a lot of energy, so they're not too harmful to us. 
Microwaves don't carry a lot of energy as well, so that's why we're able to use microwaves. But then when we take a look at ultraviolet and x-rays, that's when it becomes harmful to us because they carry a lot of energy and they can alter or mutate DNA in our body. And then we look at heat thermal energy. And this is the internal motion of an object's atoms and molecules. And it's measured by temperature. The faster the molecules move, the higher the temperature. The slower the molecules move, the lower the temperature. So it also states here, the faster the particles move, the more thermal energy they have. The slower the particles move, the less thermal energy they have. So that's why when you work out, the more you move, the more your body heats up because you're causing your atoms to move faster and faster. Our most famous example of heat thermal energy would, of course, be a fire. And then if we take a look at nuclear energy, and it's energy stored in the in center or the nucleus of an atom. And it's the most powerful energy of all. It's potential energy only because the energy stored in that nucleus is not moving. It's just sitting there. Now, we release that energy through two processes. By nuclear fission, when we break apart an atom. So in nuclear power plants, they use uranium-235 and plutonium-239. They fire a neutron into the uranium and plutonium and split that nucleus, which releases a lot of energy. And then the other process or the reverse of fission would be actually fusion. So you're taking smaller atoms and you're fusing them together to create or to release large amounts of energy. If we take a look at chemical energy, this is energy stored by chemical bonds in an object. When the bonds are broken, energy are, is released. So for example, we have gasoline, food, coal, and wood. When you put that gasoline in your car, that gasoline, the chemical bonds are broken by the heat energy that is combined with that gasoline, which gives the car the ability to move or the energy to move. When we eat our food, we choose our, chew our food up, we swallow it and digest it so we can break down those chemical bonds to release the energy from our food to give us energy so that we can move and do work. And then if you take a look at coal and wood, we burn coal and wood to release that chemical energy in the form of fire and which also causes, which ultimately causes thermal energy. Time for your first check for understanding. And in this check, you're going to write the type of energy, kinetic or potential, and the form of energy it is beside its description. So we'll do the first one together. So number one, let's look at pizza. Is pizza kinetic or potential energy? Well, one thing I do know is that pizza doesn't move. So pizza is going to be potential energy and it is in the form of chemical energy. Because when we eat that pizza, we break those chemical bonds in that pizza to release that energy. Ladies and gentlemen, you have one minute to complete the next seven, and I'll start that in one minute beginning now. Now take a look and see how you did on your first check for understanding. So we did number one together, so let's look at number two. Let's look at a radio wave. So radio wave is energy in motion, so it's kinetic energy in the form of electromagnetic energy. Number three, energy in the sun. So the energy in the sun is not moving, so it's potential energy in the form of nuclear energy. Number four, power line. So power line, inside that power line, we have electricity, but the electricity is moving, so we have kinetic energy in the form of electricity or electrical energy. Then number five, a moving car, which is kinetic energy because that car is moving, so it's kinetic energy in the form of mechanical energy. Number six, a falling basketball. We have kinetic energy, and that's also going to be mechanical energy. Number seven, an unlit match. So it's going to be potential energy in a form of chemical energy. So the chemicals inside of that match, they're not moving or going anywhere. So that's what makes it potential energy in a form of chemical energy. And then number eight, we have a forest fire. That's definitely kinetic energy because the fire is moving, and it's going to be in a form of thermal energy. Let's move on to our next one. An energy transformation is when energy goes from one form to another. For example, we have chemical energy inside of this battery. When we put this battery inside of this flashlight, it goes from chemical energy and transforms into electrical energy when we turn that flashlight on. 
Then when we turn it on, that electrical energy transforms into radiant energy, which is that light energy that we see. And it also lets off thermal energy, the heat that we feel that comes from the flashlight. Now it's time for your second check for understanding. And in this check for understanding, you're going to use the pictures to write the energy transformation for each scenario below. So take a look at number one. You're going to see what energy, energy we start off with, and then what does that energy transform to? You have one minute to answer the following energy transformation problems, and I'll start that minute beginning now. Now let's check and see how you did on this second check for understanding. So let's look at number one. In number one, we see a person putting gas or fuel inside of a car. So that gas or fuel is chemical energy, and they put it in their car so that their car can ultimately move. So we're looking, from, looking at going from chemical energy to transforming it to mechanical energy. Let's look at number two. Number two, we have a sun and then we have a tree. So we have the sunlight, so we're getting radiant energy from the sun. And that radiant energy is being transformed into chemical energy for the tree. Remember, trees store or trees and plants store their own food. So those chemical bonds or that radiant energy goes into those chemical bonds for that tree to have food for itself. And then we look at number three. First, in order for this toaster to work, we have to plug that toaster in. So our energy source starts off with electrical energy and then it's transformed to thermal energy when we use the toaster to make toast. And then let's look at our fourth one. We have chemical energy in this food and the man right here has ate, and ate the food and broken down that chemical energy in the food to later exercise. So when he's exercised, he's exercising, he's in motion. So we have the chemical energy in the food, which gives this man energy to move or exercise. So we go from chemical to mechanical energy. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope this science tutorial video was helpful to you. I'm Travis Spivey, signing off with my son Jordan Spivey. Peace, and y'all have an awesome day. Thank you.